So in the second part of the uh, lecture this week, let's actually get into the meat, pota uh, meat and potatoes of the class and start to draw the map of what our semester is going to actually look like. Um, so let's look at the course outline um, week by week. Uh, the class itself has three main sections. Um, the first section defines our terms, uh, the actors that we're going to be looking at, and their interests as we define them or as they define them themselves. Um, this first week is the intro and focusing on conflict. Second week is on economic development and instability. Third, we turn to political institutions and instability. And for, uh, week four on environmental change and scarcity and uh, the effects that it might have on political instability. So we're looking at um, economic, political, and environmental issues in the first part. And then with the section, uh, second section, look at the causes of those instability, uh, specific types of them, from population and migration, because we all exist, we all um, want things, we all need things to be able to survive, uh, and we have a tendency to move, as we've seen in, um, in uh, migration, it brought me and my family here um, for uh, better job opportunities, uh, for family connections, right? People move for a whole bunch of different issues, um, uh, a whole bunch of different reasons, and uh, whether they're environmental, economic, uh, political, or social. Then we turn to issues of food production and consumption, uh, water abundance and scarcity, natural resources, and then natural disasters. So I tried to develop the second half of the class to start from a human-centered um, approach and then move out to more um, environmental factors, natural resources, and natural disasters. And then the third part of the class is looking at how states and individuals within them, and in week 12, the international community has um, been able to successfully address some challenges and not others. And we're going to look at um, successful uh, instances of cooperation and unsuccessful ones uh, as well. For the class, there are four main areas of assessment. The first is workshop participation, which I'll have uh, more details about during the workshop this week um, and post it on Waddle for those of you who can't uh, attend one of the um, either in-person or synchronous uh, Zoom workshops. And then three written assessments, the literature review, um, the uh, research proposal, and the final essay. All of these are going to fit together and they are geared um, in a way to get you to do uh, um, a larger research project um, than you would otherwise have and be able to get feedback on them at different stages and to do something that approximates the kind of research that we do for your honors year or in, in grad school or indeed as academics. So for week six, we'll have the literature review gives you an excuse to try to um, wrap your arms around a literature uh, on a topic that you think could be interested in writing your final um, essay on, get feedback on that, um, really get familiar with the literature to be able to make a contribution or to realize where the weaknesses are and propose a research paper, get feedback on that from me, uh, and then write the final, uh, final essay. We'll have more details on all those. I already have all my research guides uh, on uh, the Waddle page for you to take a look at. Happy to answer any questions during workshop about that. I also wanted to take a little bit of time in drawing this kind of mental map uh, on the class to um, give you a heads up about how to actually do the readings for this class. Um, I tried to start in this first week to focus less on actual direct kind of research articles, but pretty soon we will see um, what I consider to be some of the cutting edge and most influential research on these topics that we're going to be covering um, this semester. I mean, the ANU is a world-class institution. We focus on research-led um, teaching, and I want to bring um, you the best of that research um, or the most 
um, important debates, uh, according to my perspective, uh, to get us to, to engage with them. But I think for those of you who might not be familiar with that, um, these kind of readings, you, you can get kind of lost in the minutiae. I know I did when I was first exposed to it. So I wanted to um, be clear from the very beginning that we want to look for meaning, substantive, uh, um, theoretical, and empirical meaning. What matters? How large is the effect that they're talking about? So you want to look at the, for the theoretical contribution and the substantive and empirical um, uh, effects. Um, and then um, look at the, the structure of the essay and get the most important bits out of them. The literature review, argument, research design, res uh, and results. Um, a lot of the policy making in a lot of the areas that we look at are now data driven um, and a lot of the um, one of the goals I think of these kind of third year seminars is it, to get you to not necessarily be a producer of this I have no expectation that your paper is going to be quantitative at all uh, though I have gotten some papers that have used um, some statistics uh, the goal is to make sure that you're an informed consumer because a lot of the media that we read are secondhand interpretations of research um, but I want you to be able to get curious enough that if you read something uh, in the paper you want to know more you can actually go to the source material and get what's important out of it um, why am I saying all this? Um, I come with my own set of implicit and explicit assumptions about the research and the field um, and my interest in political violence. Um, and I think, as with a lot of academic, uh, ANU academics, you can find more information about us on these websites. The ANU websites are horrible. We have our own personal websites. Um, but I think a lot of what I do in my research is relevant for some of the things we're going to be covering in this class. Um, I have a couple of ongoing um, um, projects. Um, one is looking at um, climate change and foreign direct investment and the other on uh, conflict seasonality. This is a map of precipitation um, across Sub-Saharan Africa in one month in 2016 and I'm looking at um, these precipitation levels and uh, merging in with other data looking at FDI projects, foreign direct investment into developing countries, specifically in Sub-Saharan Africa here, to kind of see how the environment affects uh, investment decisions as well as the violent environment. So I also merge in data looking at uh, conflict uh, in, in the region. So how can... Um, um, specifically mining corporations for this um, this paper decide to take the risk to go into areas of conflict to be able to try to extract um, uh, resources. Um, uh, one specific motivating case that I used for the start of um, the paper on uh, mining corporations I thought might be interesting to an Australian audience who might be familiar with Australian mining corporations um, is I start by looking at an example of um, Anvil Mining. It used to be an Australian corporation. It was sent, uh, since uh, sold uh, to uh, multinationals abroad. I include in um, the text of my notes the first paragraph of um, the paper in case you were curious. The takeaway is that there was a small um, rebel group that emerged out of nowhere in eastern DRC. Um, they set up uh, camp in uh, a small village. The next day, the government um, killed over 100 people, got them out of the village, um, and used um, some trucks and other equipment from Anvil Mining. Uh, and within uh, a couple of months, Anvil Mining ended up substantially expanding uh, their in investments uh, in that region. So I, I think that kind of made me wor uh, wonder why the company um, allowed their uh, equipment to be used. They ended up being, uh, some of their leaders were accused of war crimes. They were um, uh, acquitted of that. Um, but then also, um, is that cooperation part of the reason why they expanded their operations uh, less than uh, a year later? So you can see these kind of decisions um, made about um, getting uh, involved in areas of, of conflict uh, what the decisions um, are involved in and how that can link into 
um, the larger economic and uh, political world.